Hello, Link341. Uh, welcome to yet another lecture in uh, phonetics in Linguistics 341. Uh, in today's uh, lecture, we will be talking about the place of articulation. And uh, we will be moving on from uh, the dimensions that we talked about, cardinal vowels, and we now come to um, a more specific uh, consonant uh, survey that we will uh, cover today by going through uh, the place of articulation uh, dimension in today's lesson. So, so far we have rapidly gone through the English only uh, speech sounds because you were probably already familiar with those and we just wanted to teach you or I want to teach you how to transcribe them first of all and what kind of mechanisms there are, uh, articulatory mechanisms there are that we are using to produce them. From here on out, we will go back through the whole process in slow motion. So we will cover some Eng English uh, consonants, of course, because English consonants are also world, uh, world languages consonants. And we will build up our understanding of how speech sounds are made in the process for all the languages in the world. Our goal, our ultimate goal, is to get from what we know about articulation to acoustics. That is how speech uh, sounds are transmitted through air. So we will try to do this. Um, we will try to uh, do this. We will definitely do this. Uh, but we, will, we are going to start uh, from the place of articulation. Just so as you know, uh, these links. Um, that I provided here are still working and most of the sounds that I'm going to use in, in the lectures, all, all of the sounds can be found on these links. I won't go through them, but you can take a look and uh, search for the sounds you need uh, for specific languages in case uh, the PowerPoint presentation does not play them. So uh, if that's the case, uh, search through these. If not, uh, ask me or shoot me an email. Okay, so back to the um, big picture. Through combinatorics, languages can make a large number of distinctions out of a small number of articulatory dimensions. However, consider the gaps in the IPA chart. And we have it somewhere here. So, yeah. So the IPA chart, okay. Yeah, longer is here and there are some gaps inside of it you know white fields and of course gray fields because not all combinations of gestures are possible not all combinations of ge gestures are likely well why is that so um you know you may think about it uh but i think that the 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 answer is clear the dimensions interact they are based on physical realities they're not abstract so the combinations of gestures are not infinite because you need to move actual organs to produce speech sounds and that's why they're not abstract of course the dimensions interact they're based on physical realities of, of course in fact people you know if you think about it if you compare it to the some some abstract speech sounds some abstract speech sounds for take for example people who invent new languages they're called conlangers there's a whole in, industry of conlanging if you want to try it um, they can pretty much invent any language uh, they want that would have any kind of uh, phonemic in inventory uh, or phonemic system they can do whatever they want right is their language um, and they can, uh, you know, create a phonological inventory without consulting the, the dimensions or the combinatorics, which does not dwell well with uh, the audience. Those languages that actually have the sounds that are present in other languages uh, are much better perceived by people because they are possible. It is, you know, when you hear Valyrian or uh, Dothraki, the languages of the Game of Thrones or Klingon, 
it might you know seem very strange at first but they are possible languages and they remind you of some language usually that's the case so these are well written languages and well well uh, de uh, designed languages uh, i would say so that's my personal opinion but um you know if you if you're if you if your imagination is unlimited you may think of um some some um speech sounds that are impossible to produce such as for example i think here on this one his a velar trill that's impossible right so it would be here velar trill over there it's impossible to produce uh, uh, but velar so no it's it's really uh, articulatorily impossible the dimensions that interact do not do not allow you to do that and if you invent such a language that has this okay it might go well but you know that's uh that's another story and it's not uh it's not real it's not based on physical realities but the inter uh, dimensions are and we actually use speech organs to produce them to uh, produce all of the sounds that are there in the, uh, in the IPA and some combinations that are not there or not found in any languages but we could produce them still okay okay so we've covered that now the coordination coordination between the dimensions is vital here is a simplified version of uh, the coordination of movements in the word pan um, with uh, which is aspirated there is the this first bilabial closing and larynx opening at the same time to constitute p. Um, larynx opening is just this is just a sketch uh, from, uh, taken from one one of the books, but it's simply bilabial closing is very important here, and that's the main um, main argument for the place of articulation, and the larynx opening is simply uh, that uh, they're open because it's voiceless, right? So we now know that. Uh, I'll get back uh, to that in a minute. Then a tongue, tongue body lowering gesture constitutes ash. So you, you low front, uh, you low the tongue in order to make an ash. Um, there is, uh, uh, of course, a little bit of aspiration here. And lastly, the alveolar closing and velum opening constitute n, uh, n sound. So the gestures here overlap in time, and that's important. And they begin and are in progress simultaneously. Therefore, we get something like uh, the lowering of the of the velum, right, for the airflow to go through the nose, and uh, which begins even before before the nasal. So before n, and therefore we have a nasal as vowel. This gives us a, uh, the nasal, nasalized vowel, which we talked about in the last lesson. This is a highly frequent word in English. Uh, there are other highly frequently used phrases in English, such as a uh, verb phrase, for example, miss you. And that's, this is a good example because many of you would produce it, miss you. Um, I miss you. Uh, for example, in a co-articulated speech, in a very uh, fast speech, um, which it occurs because we are coordinating all of these dimensions and mo most of them at the same time and therefore um, you have an, this assimilation process so coordination of the dimensions is important uh, yeah remember so I said that P is produced with closed lips those kinds of sounds are called stop sounds you probably know that and they completely stop the flow of air through the articulatory tract right and therefore we call them aerodynamic we refer to them as aerodynamic exceptions because technically you would produce any sound by using the flow of air right right without it without the molecules of air there would be no sound so counterintuitively you can think of stops as no sounds right non-sounds uh, because of stopping of the, the airflow by making the 
airtight seal between the articulators. And that is why we refer to stops as uh, aerodynamic exceptions, because they do not cooperate with the aerodynamics, the study of uh, the properties of moving air, right? An interesting observation was made actually by Larry Foget, one of the author, authors of the book, of the, your textbook. Um, he, he said that uh, basically uh, many consonants are just ways of beginning or ending vowels, which is why I showed to you that there needs to be an opening gesture, right? So. In some of the previous lectures, I told you we need to have an opening gesture as well for this P to pan out as, uh, pun intended here, to pan out as um, uh, the stop, right, uh, that is released. Uh, because without the opening, there would be no sound. Um, yeah, so a question for you would be, are there some places in the articulatory tract where this is easier than others? So basically we we make um we make stops you know we uh produce stops but on a whole which stops are easier right and i can tell you you know traditionally in the class we would uh, try out the the tongue exper experiment to see what your tongue can do to test the limits of your articulatory possibilities just for example, take your tongue and lick inside the mouth, like, or you know, wherever you want, and you might get uh, uh, the hang of uh, the hang of it. So, where is the uh, easiest place to produce uh, speech sound? One of the easiest places is what we have here, as in pen. Um, an easy place is between the lips. That's why children start producing mama, papa. Baba, for example, first, and not some other uh, speech sounds. Uh, and what is a difficult place or impossible place? Well, uh, an impossible, under, uh, you know, maybe quotation marks and in uh, parentheses, would be between the teeth and lips. You can make a fricative sound like this, but not a stop. So you can make b or because you are curling your lower lip towards the upper teeth and you're trying to make an airtight seal to produce a stop. This is impossible because some portion of air has to go through because your lip, your lower lip is a soft tissue. And even if you have squeezed the teeth, the upper teeth, or even if you have squeezed your uh, lip with the upper teeth, maybe you might be able to produce a stop for a moment. And it sounds like something like that but it might be possible right because it's um, denoted here with a white white uh, okay here we go in a white field with a white field so it might be possible some phoneticians think so however it is highly unlikely and difficult that the air will not go through that is that you will not have some friction or turbulence right that we have for v and f so stops are the consonant category that we are going to talk about um, right now i'm going to walk you through an, an entire set of stops in today's lecture there are different places of articulation for stops this is a row of stops extracted from the ipa chart Obviously, not all of the stops are listed here. Uh, we will uh, fill out this chart as we are going, uh, but we will start with what is familiar to you, to you, to us, based on the place of articulation. First up, so this is the manner of artic articulation. Stops are the aperture that we make, or you know, the aperture is complete, or or not complete. Actually, the degree of constriction is high as possible so you constrict your your uh, articulators but uh, we will go through these stops by listing out possible uh, places of articulation and one of the places of articulation is bilabial for example 
made with both lips alveolar made by uh, the tip of the tongue hitting the roof of your mouth velar made by um, uh, the back of the tongue hitting the the velum of your uh, the, your velum right so these three are familiar to you and um, you know the, these are the three most common places of articulation for stamps uh, this information that I have it has been obtained from the updated database that, which we call UPSID uh, which is um, I don't know shorter for UCLA phonological segment inventory database and is publicly available so you can uh, access this database uh, the database was created by a phonetician called Ian Madison and was uh, updated uh, by Madison uh, Christine Precoda uh, who surveyed 451 languages which do not belong to uh, so how did they do this right they had to have some criteria for serving certain languages you cannot just choose English German and Spanish for example which are which come basically from from the same family right um, so what they did they uh, used they selected languages from different families right different different um, branches of the families and uh, they wanted to have a diverse set of languages uh, they for example did not want just to include Indo-European languages but other languages Niger Congo languages for example and Aleutian and so on and so forth language isolates as well um, so out of 451 languages I'll give you some stats here 446 have bilabial stops only Oh, how many one two three four five do not have a uh, bilabial stops at all these are the languages such as Wichita which is Gadon language spoken in uh, I think Okakoma somewhere and there is a city Wichita which is unrelated it's in Kansas uh, then there is a Aleut is a Schemo Aleut language spoken in Aleutian Islands in Alaska uh, Hoopa language as well at the Baskan language spoken in California and Cherokee and Aik are spoken as well in uh, the USA and these are indigenous languages yeah all of them so they don't have bilabial stops which is unusual for languages right uh, out of uh, 451 languages only one does not have uh, alveolar and dental stops so all of these uh, we call them coronals because uh, they are produced with the tip and the blade of the tongue um, and only Hawaiian which you know where it is <laughs> does not have uh, alveolars which is also quite uh, unique uh, 448 have velar stops for example Hoopa, Klau and Panimo Klau is I think language in Lib Liberia, Liberia in Africa Banimo is a school language in uh, Papu, Papu, Papua New Guinea, sorry. Um, so, uh, lots of uh, uh, foreign names in different places. But these are uh, several languages that uh, do not have velar stops. So these stops are quite common in, in words, languages, and in English they exist, right? Okay. So we know that the speakers of the majority of Brawl's languages can make stops with lips, with our tongue touching the alveolar, alveolar ridge, right? Or um, touching some, some part of this front fronter area. Um, and touching, you know, with the back of the tongue, the velum or soft palate. The question is, what is the next best place for articulations uh, for stops we have some options here this uh, you know palatal stop uvular stop pharyngeal epiglottal and glottal stop um, so we you know give you some options and you can think about those uh, we know that uh, for example labials are called labials dental alveolar post alveolars are called uh, coronal sounds and they are uh, produced with a you know front part of the tongue 
With the body of the tongue, you produce palatal and velar, and we call these dorsal sounds. Um, I think uvular as well. Uh, although uh, it, it seems to me, from what I remember, maybe uvular, pharyngeal would be radical, so further back. It doesn't really matter, but what do you think is, um, is the next best place for the articulation of stops? What's the easiest, right? Turns out that the next most popular option amongst the languages in the database is the palatal. It is the next easiest place to put uh, the body of your tongue against uh, the, you know, against the palate. And it is quite massive place of articulation in comparison to others. So it does make sense in a way, which is why it is the fourth, be fourth best place to produce stops. So, uh, here are, or there are two palatal stops in world's languages. And normally I would ask you to write these down. So I'll write all of these symbols down, uh, preferably in some kind of a chart like this, um, in your notebook or wherever you're writing the, the, the notes, if you're uh, watching these lessons, uh, I would write them on the whiteboard, but they are here, so no needs to. Um, and uh, you don't need to um, read my handwriting. Um, although we are using LaTeX or LaTeX, uh, it is still good to know how to draw these symbols. Uh, the voiceless version of a palatal stop is letter, uh, is letter C actually in English or just this letter, right? Which I mentioned you should not use when transcribing English because it doesn't exist in English. The voice version looks like uh, J, without a dot, of course, with this line in the middle. Uh, if you want to memorize it as an upside down F, that's also fine by me, as long as you can uh, memorize this one. So, Peter Ladefugid uh, says them here on these, uh, in, in these recordings, and I'll play them to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, the palatal stops are produced with the tongue, body of your tongue uh, hitting the, the palate, right? Uh, you can say yeah, yeah sound, yeah, or yad, yeah, and push the tongue higher up. So you could do you could say, for example, something like ye cha 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 ya ya cha ya, right? So these are the palatal stops. Um, yeah, the contact is very brief, and according to the UPSI database, seventy-one languages have the palatal stops. So not a lot, uh, but still there are languages that have those. Um, I'm going to uh, play for you uh, yeah. palatals, uh, the contrast between palatals and velars in the Guo, uh, spoken in Cameron. Uh, this is a contrast between the voice palatal stop and the voice velar stop, and I think you could hear very clearly that there is a difference. Okay, so. Basically, this g here is the um, same as in English, ege, uh, but uh, this one is as if you're saying g, y at the same time, ege, ege, and uh, this voiceless would be as if you're saying k, y at the same time, so ege, 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 ege. Right, um, and you know, just just try them a couple of times, and you'll get the hang of it. So, learning the mechanisms help. Um, I should say that we find these sounds in Turkish, Hungarian, uh, Kwakula, indigenous language, Khmer, the Ghanaian languages, Basque, Breton, and so on. So, uh, a lot of languages have. Uh, these palatal stops uh, because of their articulation you might f 
find yourself in a situation when you're producing an affricate, you know, something like this one, which is a post alveolar. Um, so this is a post alveolar affricate. This one is um, voice alveolar affricate, but it's uh, dental in this case, you know, uh, depending on the language, it can be dental. Uh, and the third one is the palatal stop. Uh, the palatal stop ends up by being produced a bit anterior in the mouth um, here than the rest of these two and a bit anterior than Hungarian example down below because um, different languages might produce them differently still it is palatal stop because it does affect palates to uh, the greatest degree and you can see the difference here and perhaps even try to produce, uh, for example, this uh, and right? So there is a difference there. Okay. Uh, I want to show you uh, some examples from Hungarian here, uh, which also has what we call a the palatal nasal here is, is written like this, like this. This is a symbol for it. Uh, you can think about it as N with this hook uh, as if you're merging J and N into one. And it's, uh, do not confuse it with a velar nasal, which is merging N and G, right? N and G instead of N and J, like this one. Um, the you know the palatal does look like like that and it sounds like that because you are producing something like ny, ny, ny. Um, at the same time as if you're producing n and y uh, and you go further back uh, with your tongue in your mouth because of the yad uh, influence of this uh, palatalization influence um, you you get to hear this sound in uh, English words such as canyon, or if you know the Irish singer Enya from uh, you know from the movies Lord of the Rings. Um, so you you I don't think you would have problems with producing this one. Uh, the Serbian uh, has also a N, uh, so I can produce it for you authentically as in words such as sanya, ranyen, kony, uh, vonya, for example, and so on and so forth. Um, and the Serbian uh, orthographically is written like this. Okay, I'll try to draw it. You see, N and J combined, right? Uh, orthographically, I would, I, otherwise I would uh, ask you not to use, not to look at orthography or to avoid orthographic systems, but in this case, it's very um, um, useful for you. Uh, that same thing is useful for uh, for you to, to, to see with respect to Hungarian. You have t y and g y or t yod and g yod and n yod, uh, which all indicate palatalization or palatal sound. So you can uh, refer to these. Uh, uh, orthographic spellings and this is how they sound these are voices stops okay Q. Q. and uh, it would be nice uh, if you sang along such as this one Q. 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 Anya, Anya, right? Um, and this is how Peter Lai forget produces it. Anya, Anya, Anya. Yeah, I, I, I prefer Hungarian examples for sure. Um, yeah, so that's all I have to say about the palatal nasals. Uh, the nasals, the nasal occurs in many languages such as Spanish, as in uh, Anya, Anya, right? Uh, year, French. Uh, I think you you know the words in French with this sound uh, Vietnamese Quechua which we'll uh, take a look at next 
um, so yeah the, this uh, these were the palatals or palatal stops and palatal nasals now we move on to uh, the next most popular place of articulation for stops that is uvular uh, with respect to uvular you make a contact with the back of the tongue and uvula with which is a little dangly thing that looks like a grape and it does mean grape in latin actually um, from latin is uvula i think the airstream is uh, in this case interrupted here when the when the tongue, tongue hits the uh, uvula and uh, you've probably seen this organ uh, in your body if you were opening your mouth to see whether your throat is sore or not or whatnot and your doctor has most certainly seen it i guess so here they are these are the uvular stops um these two here i'll circle them yeah uh written as q and um uppercase g but a smaller one smaller letter so you would say uh you would write something like uh, k, k, g, g, right? So try to make uh, k and g, but go further back with your tongue, such as k, k, g, g, right? And this is how Peter Landerfogel produces them. Alka, alka, alga, alga, right? Uh, there are 62 languages in the UPSI database that have uvular stops. Uh, for uvular nasal, uh, which is almost like an engma, but a bit posterior, so you would produce it something like mm, mm, anga, 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 right? There is a little bit of this uh, good flavor, velar flavor here, because tongue hits um, uh, the uh, uvula, but the, the velum needs to be lowered, so that makes it really really hard and difficult to produce this uh, sound and it's uh, this sound this sound is found only in Japanese language uh, from the language that, that were surveyed when Japanese produced something like Nihon Nihon something like that uh, I don't have a recording but I should uh, probably um, procure it for you right Nihon um, when you're producing this with the back of your tongue, you even have you even have this h and o or u uh, in this case, which is Japanese Nihon, um, and uh, it's easier to say this um, uh, the sound. Uh, the voiceless uvular stops, or the sorry, the voiceless uvular stop, k k k k, appears in uh, Arabic. The voice version g, 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 uh, is hard to find. It's, it appears only in 14 languages out of the whole database. And these languages are those of the Caucasus area. Caucasus languages in the Western Asia and in Middle Asia as well, such as Kyrgyz. It also appears in Farsi, uh, we have to say. And the voices version uh, is more common uh, throughout languages. I have here some, uh, contrast, which we will briefly go through. Contrast between velar and uvular sounds. So, as I said, try to produce velar sounds and then go further back to, with your tongue to produce uvulars. And that's basically it. So, you would say k -k 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 or g -g 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 right? You need a little bit of uh, hydration here, which I don't have in my mouth, but that's okay. Uh, so let's listen to um, velar and uvular Quechua contrast. Quechua is spoken primarily in Bolivia and Peru, and it uh, used to be a language of the Empire of Inca. Cuyui. Cayu. Cuyui. Cuyui. Cayu. Cayu. Cuyui. Cuyui. Cayu. Cayu. Right here, uh, even especially with the uh, aspirated one, you can you can feel the difference, right? And hear the difference. Uh, the yeah, the, this one you it, you might not know about it. It's a combination of basically l and l, and I, I'm 
inviting against Serbian, which uh, spells it like this, L and J. So Serbian has the sound L, L. Italian also ha has it, such as figlia, figlia, you know, with, with the, this kind of uh, gesture. But um, yeah, the main thing is that uh, this is a um, lateral, right? L sound, which we will talk about later. So you say kuyui, kayu, 